Okay, so here is the start of stuff I'm going to need to make a cast of this tooth. You see that it's hollow and it's cracked. So I need to fill the crack with some clay, otherwise the mold material will fill in there too tightly and I won't be able to pull the tooth out. I think I can reliably get a cast of the hollow part of the tooth and I'll get out here at the tip too. <coughs> Here's a mold of something else but you can look inside and see Basically, that's where the original tooth would have been. Got a scale so we can measure stuff precisely. The clamps there. Hold this. I'll set it up. So the tooth is right in there. Okay, so I've got the tooth pinned in there with three pins. It's not touching any of the sides, which is good. That means that the mold material will fill in there just right. Next, what I'll do is I'll seal this all up so that the mold material, the rubber, won't come pouring out. I'll fill it up and then walk away for 24 hours and it'll set up nice and solid like rubber. Okay, so when I figured out how much rubber I need for here, it came up with a total of 170 grams based on the weight of those. So that's just a guess. Got 173 grams. I already subtracted the weight of the stirring stick and the container. But now you'll notice that stuff is white. Those are blue. This stuff is running liquid. These stuff, these, are solid rubber. So how does that happen? Well, I need to add some of this blue liquid at a ratio of 10 parts, one part for every 10 parts. So I know it's a little bit of math, but I'm going to add 17 grams of blue stuff, which will end up at 190 total. So what happens is there is a chemical reaction between the blue liquid and the white stuff and it turns it into rubber. This stuff takes 24 hours to cure, just to have the full chemical reaction. So I've got lots of time to stir it. If I stir it incompletely and there's white sections, then those will stay sticky forever. So I need to make sure that I get it really, really well mixed. As you can see, it's starting to get a uniform blue color. Okay. Got it mixed to a nice uniform color and texture. And now I'm going to pour it in. There will be some bubbles, but they'll all work themselves out. Like I said, it takes 24 hours to set. So, it's 
been plenty of time for this to set up. I put this little piece in here to help me tell which way the tooth is oriented inside of there. Also got a mark right there. I'm actually going to slice right here so that I know where I want to go in to get the tooth out. There it goes. Remember, inside of there is the killer whale tooth. These little white pieces are the sample number. So then I can remember later which tooth this is. This is the Gravina tooth. So now what I have to do is slice down into the rubber until I hit the killer whale tooth. Being very careful with this razor blade, of course. Now as a trade-off, the bigger a hole I make to get the tooth out, the harder it is to get a good copy of the tooth when I pour the resin in here. There you can see the tooth just about ready to come out. in there. You have to cut a little bit more. There, it's released. So inside, see that little nubbin of rubber sticking up from the bottom. That corresponds to the hollow bit right there. So when I fill this with epoxy resin, I'll fill it up and I'll close this very carefully. Make sure that it doesn't leak out from this seam right here. And when it sets up and solidifies, it'll look just like this tooth. Okay, so the next step is to mix part A with part B. I'm going to mix it one to one. For starters, I'm going to guess about 60 grams total, which means I need 30 grams of one and 30 of the other. So this stuff actually cures really, really quickly. It's a very fast chemical reaction. We'll be able to see that after I pour it in there. I think. I think there'll be a little bit left we can watch. So I have to work pretty quickly. So I'm going to pour and stir and then I'll talk about it after that. Overshot a little bit, but I think that's going to be okay. Need to stir it all completely. Okay, so now I open up a little spot and pour it in. It's getting close to the top. Okay, so now I need to slide it down into the into the pipe. It's just now starting to cloud up, and that means that it's starting to set. You can see it happening right in front of you. Watch it. See the cloud spreading? 
Think it's milkier and milkier. There it goes. It's almost all done. And this same thing is happening inside of the mold right now. And then it'll take probably another hour before it firms up really good and solid before I take it out of the, the mold. Okay, the last step before we can cut it, I need to put the tooth through the table saw, through the tooth saw, but I can't just hold on to it, so I'm going to glue it to this wooden block using hot glue right here. Right about like that. Okay, so we've got the tooth mounted on the block, and it's lined up to hit the saw blade right there. You can see how it's lined up to go right through the midline of the tooth. The saw, the water cooled diamond edged blade, it's a rock saw. And it's got this platform that the block mounts to, and then the platform will feed automatically through the saw. And all I have to do is turn the switch on, and it'll all start spinning. Okay, this is a little bit louder now. The saw is going, you can see the water is splashing around. Now I just have to turn the switch here.